Hello, I'm Jennifer Branch. Sometimes on a dreary winter day, there's nothing better than some cut flowers you can enjoy for the week. But if you paint them, you can enjoy them forever. Let's paint. I'm starting out the easy way with a nice arch block of paper, rough press. I want to experiment a little bit with uh, a little bit more texture. These are gorgeous flowers and I highly encourage you to get your own. I'm starting off very loosely, um, just dashing the palest color yellow around because it's the center of focus. And I want you to remember the whole sketch drying time included took 22 minutes. So this is something that you can do after dinner when you get home from work. It, it just takes a few minutes. So don't forget to splatter. This is a sketch. You want to have fun with it and relax. And one way to not be so intimidated by that blank piece of paper staring right back at you when you put something perfect is to splatter paint some paint. Or if you're not that bold, water. It'll make everything looser and it'll make you relax. So all the yellow is just the vague shape of the little daisy flowers and some a lot of action going on with the splatter. I've left a lot of holes everywhere and I'm just getting the basic shapes. Now I'm starting to mix a little and I mix more when I'm using my little palette than when I'm using my big one. Um, one reason is space and the other reason is I'm working quickly. I'm not working in lots of layers. So I'm using some cobalt teal mixed in with a little, there's a little bit of co the cobalt violet already in there and that's going to make kind of a grayed greeny yellow. And the yellow lily really does have a green tinge to it, especially deep down in there. So that's going to um, be perfect to go with the cobalt teal that I'm doing on the um, for the leaves. Uh, I want to connect the two because really the flower is part of the plant and there's usually some of both colors even if it's a bright orange one there's some of both colors in the leaves that are in the petals. A little bit more of mixing that's quin red and I'm wanting it to have a little bit of a warmer tone but I don't want as harsh as or opaque as a cad red quite yet so I'm just dashing this around I'm using my squirrel brush um, so it makes a very loose movement get lots of gaps for the whites in there very rough texture remember the squirrel hair is going to, or any natural hair, will give you a much looser effect than a synthetic hair, even though they make them very well now, but uh, it's still going to be a much looser effect if you use the synthetic. And you want the rough dashes for something like a, a sketch. You You don't want it to be precise and tight and all of that sort of thing. You might want that later on when you do your finished painting, but right now you're wanting the idea of it. You're wanting it very loose, very quick, and um, lots of holes, lots of sparkle in it. And I see a very distinct difference between a sketch and a finished painting. A uh, finished painting usually has a lot of sketches behind it. There were a lot of tries, uh, a lot of work, a lot of focusing on different aspects of something, and eat, learning a little bit more with, say, painting the yellow flower. Okay, now I want to paint the, the red flowers or the daisies or just focus on the contrast between two flowers. And there may be 20 sketches before the finished production of a painting is done. And the sketches can be wonderful, 
but they're not thought out the same way. It's a different thought process. It's a different, one is very quick and the other is the product of thinking about something a long time and trying all sorts of things, half of which didn't work, but it's a beautiful composition, beautiful light, and a lot of different elements that come together in a finished gorgeous painting. But here we're talking about sketches. And sketches are just so much fun to do. They're light and they're easy and there should be no stress involved. It's just a very relaxed experience of, it's a way to experience the world in a different way that lets you sharpen your memories about everything. Now notice how the darks really bring out the other colors. The yellow looked a little blah before I added the strong, strong darks. And I used the Van Dyke Brown and Cobalt Teal and pretty much, as you saw, everything I could throw at it. So I want some good strong darks, but I want a lot of holes in there, both holes with white and holes with other colors. I am going to have to make sure that all those directional lines don't lead me out of the painting. Um, I don't want the greatest contrast pulling the viewer's eye out of the painting. I want it pulling the viewer's eye into the painting and keeping it there. It's a bit like a conjuring trick. You want to direct the viewer's eyes, uh, the attention where you want it to be. So a few little centers on daisies. And daisies don't look like much of anything, and then you add the centers, and they're suddenly there. I want some strong darks. And the strong darks with the um, white holes in them. Now, the darks are really all that's going to shape the Alstrom area. It's... Uh, I just want a vague idea of some pink and it really is there just to make the yellow lilies pop a little, to add a little bit more warm, hot color. And as you can see, my kitchen is terracotta orange, so I have to have some color or it's not going to look like much of anything. Now see how the detail of the daisies really starts to it doesn't take much detail and that's all you need and just the couple darks um, with the pink flowers that's all you need to make it look like hey there's some flowers back there that's that's all I don't want any more than that I'm using the greenish yellows same colors as everywhere else and to do a few more details, a couple shadows on the yellow daisies. Now remember, this is a painting of a bouquet. The central point is the yellow lily, but this is of a bouquet. I'm not doing a close-up of a, one flower. It's about, this is a sketch about a happy bouquet that I brought home and put on my kitchen table. And I hope I this inspires you to go get your own happy bouquet but it, I'm not doing a focus of wow there's this perfect peony that's growing in my yard or something like that this is the all over it's a happy bouquet of flowers I could have done this in a sketchbook but I wanted the square format seemed to fit the best for me it um, would have felt a little isolated in my normal pentalic So I'm mixing a little of the Nico Azo yellow in there just to dull it a bit. And just adding those shadows really makes a difference. Now another thing, if you're doing a group of flowers like this, it's very, very important. We're a garden landscape. It's very, very important to use the same small group of colors throughout the painting. 
Yes, you can have pops of red or pops of cobalt teal, but you want to use the painting, the cobalt teal and the greens, not just in a little pop. You want to use the reds in the greens, not just in the pop of the blossoms. And that helps it hold together as an entire sketch. It makes sense together. And if it was just an isolated pigment, it doesn't, it doesn't flow right. So more splatter to just show loose, happy bouquet, having fun. And that's all this is. This is having fun. I have let it dry just a tiny bit. I think I spent about two minutes laying it dry. So a few darks to uh, just to do negative painting around the daisies and the lily and it's gotten a little dark and heavy right in there if I was going to do it again I would probably lighten that up a tiny bit and odds are I will do it again But I do want those petals to, I want there to be a sense of depth into the lily. So there does need to be an extreme dark at the end, even though it's such a light flower. Okay, so the cadmium yellow has a really different effect. Remember, it's a very opaque yellow as compared to the azo yellow that I used for the initial transparent um, petals. So that opaque on top of the transparent gives you a lovely texture and it really makes the rough paper, the sparkle show up. So knowing which colors are opaque and which transparent, um, that makes a big difference. And some of them, it depends on how much water you use with them. Azo yellow can be pretty heavy if you just glob it on there, which I don't recommend doing usually. But I, no, so I also knew that I would use the cadmium yellow, the opaque, and so I chose not to use cadmium red for the Alstroemeria, but I wanted to use the very translucent quinacridone red, much lighter, a little bit bluer color. So I'm just letting that drip into the green. Just so that it comes sharply into focus and then fades away. Just lay my brush dance. Now see how using the surrounding colors and just pulling in some of those to make the shadow makes sense with the translucent petal. I use that technique quite a lot when I'm negative painting with flowers. I want the strong dark to pull you inside the lily there because that is a very cone shape in the central part. Some heavy quinacridone rust. And I did use quinacridone rust in the leaves, so it's not an isolated pigment. And here's the finished sketch. So I hope this inspires you to get a beautiful bouquet of flowers and sketch it. It doesn't take long to do a beautiful sketch that will last forever and always be a happy memory. If you like this video, please check out my website, paintingwatercolor.com and please subscribe or give me a thumbs up. It really helps. Happy painting.